Hi, my name is Elisa Bliss. I was born May 29th, 1981 in Provo at the Utah Valley Hospital. Um, when I was born, I um, did have ear aches and um, which caused my hearing to be muffled. So um, for about the first three and a half years of my life, I really couldn't hear very well. And, um, and then finally they found um, medication that cleared up my ear aches. And so eventually I was able to hear. So it was around three, three and a half, four years old when I was actually able to hear. Um, because of that, it did slow my learning down. And um, I did have to take speech therapy um, in kindergarten. Um, I took resource classes all the way up until sixth grade, just trying to catch up with everybody else um, because um, it had slowed me down. Um, but by my sixth grade year, I was all caught up um, with the rest of my class. So I eventually was average um, as far as um, uh, how intelligent I was. So um, that was definitely um, a hard trial um, that I had. Um, but um, I'm definitely... I'm thankful for it because I was able to um, conquer it and uh, overcome that obstacle. Um, growing up, the holidays were huge uh, in my family. Um, my parents, especially my dad, just loved Christmas, um, loved celebrating our birthdays. Um, I, I think uh, Halloween was huge um, with my dad. So, um, so for Halloween, we, you know, you know, you get dressed up in the cute uh, outfits and or ugly outfits, and then uh, we would always, you know, go trick or treating, and then we would go over to my grandma and grandpa Bliss's house um, for Halloweens, and then. Uh, we would go um, trick or treating up there as well. Um, so it was something fun. It was a tradition that we did every year. Um, definitely Halloween. Uh, a lot of great memories there. Uh, my mom would actually paint um, different types of um, Halloween pictures on our windows um, each year for Halloween as well. And uh, I remember the neighbors really thought that was pretty neat and cool. So we were kind of known for the house on the block with the fun paintings of um, Halloween stuff. So that was pretty cool. Um, Christmases were huge uh, growing up. Um, Christmas Eve, we always went over to uh, my grandparent Bliss's house, uh, my uncles, aunts, cousins. We would all go over there. Um, we would have dinner. We would have goodies. We would do a um, cute little talent show. And Santa Claus would come. And then at the very end, my grandpa would always um, talk about uh, the meaning of Christmas and what it represents um, for us Christians and um, about Jesus Christ. And we would always end the night on something spiritual like that. So that was really cool. Christmas mornings, my mom and dad, as they were getting um, Christmas ready for us, <laughs> we would, be down in the basement, um, all of us kids, and um, would be banging on the ceiling, um, wanting to go up there. Um, so that that was always kind of fun because we would always be down there really excited, wanting to get our presents. Um, and then we would go up, open our presents, uh, we would have Christmas breakfast, and, and then kind of did our own thing throughout the rest of the day. But um, that is definitely a something that I want to carry on um, for my kids. Um, it's, a, it's a great tradition. So, um, so that's what we did for Christmas. New Year's Eve, um, my dad loved Yahtzee, so it was a tradition to play Yahtzee with my dad. Um, and he was definitely competitive. He liked to win, and somehow my dad always did win. <laughs> it seems like he didn't lose very much. So that was something we would do 
on New Year's Eve and, you know, we would have goodies and all of that stuff. And then when midnight came, we would go out and we would um, bang um, pans and make loud noises and celebrate uh, the New Year that way. So that was another family fun tradition. Um, Easter, we would have, you know, the Easter Bunny would come and my mom would make us uh, Easter Sunday dresses for us to wear and we would have all the chocolates and goodies and um, that was, uh, that was fun um, as, as well. Uh, and usually the Saturday before Easter, we would go over to my grandparent Bliss's house and we would, um, we would uh, do the whole, you know, egg hunting and um, dinners and stuff like that as well. Um, gosh, at 4th of July, we um, would hang, uh, hang out with my grandparents as well. 24th of July, we would go to Mapleton, and they always had the tradition holiday in the city of celebrating the 24th of July, Pioneer Day. And um, they had a parade, and um, there was a carnival, and we would go back to grandparents' house and have our own barbecue. And um, so 24th of July was something huge that we did on the Bliss side family as well. So, um, yeah, just great uh, family traditions. Um, Valentine's is another one. Um, my, my dad was big on making sure that us girls, especially, there's five of us, um, five kids and three girls and two boys. And um, on Valentine's Day, you know, my dad made sure that us girls got roses um, growing up. And uh, my mom would make cute little heart cookies with our names on it. And um, they were sugar cookies that she made. And um, I mean, even you know, as we got older, if we weren't dating someone, like Valentine's Day was always a special day because that's the way that my parents um, had it. So, um, yeah, they just great, great memories of holidays and traditions. And um, you just get excited to when that holiday comes around because it's something special, something you get to celebrate with your family. And it brings you together, and uh, I'm definitely thankful uh, for the traditions that um, my parents did for us growing up. So, growing up, we were huge BYU football fans. Um, that was <laughs> huge in our family. My dad loved BYU football, and I could probably tell you the history of BYU football. Um, Saturdays, I was in front of that TV watching the game with my dad. Um, it, it was such a huge part of our upbringing. Uh, I remember um, if BYU lost, <laughs> that we wanted to go over to grandma's and house for the weekend because we knew dad would be in a bad mood and we did not want to be around that. So uh, we definitely wanted BYU to win pretty much every game because uh, we wanted dad to be in a good mood. Um, I remember uh, going to BYU football games um, with my dad, with my uncle Craig, um, with my siblings. Uh, I remember during halftime we would go down and throw the football around outside of the football stadium. Um, that was uh, huge. And we always looked forward to BYU football games. Um, it's still something that is a big part of who I am. And uh, I get pretty into it and um, I love it. And, um, and I get mad sometimes <laughs> when they lose. But the older I've gotten, the more I've uh, definitely have a different perspective uh, about sports, but um, I am just thankful for having that tradition in my family, um, the tradition of BYU football, tradition of Lavelle Edwards, um, all the great quarterbacks. Um, I mean, it, it was, it brought a lot of excitement and fun into our family. And uh, that, that's something that I, 
am so, so thankful. So I was baptized in the beginning of June of 1989. And I remember um, my baptism um, pretty clearly. Um, I remember a couple days before I got baptized, um, practicing with my dad and um, just remember him telling me what an important um, step I was taking in my life. And um, I just remember the importance of the decision I was about to make. Um, my dad and my mom were very uh, clear about how important baptisms were. Um, I remember um, everybody in my family was at my baptism. Um, my extended family was there. And I just remembered when I came out of that water um, and went up to, well, first when I came out of that water, I gave my dad a hug. <laughs> and then I just remember seeing my mom and I just remember feeling happy and clean and everybody that loved me was there watching me do such an important thing and it was such a great feeling to have to feel so much love to feel pure to feel um just happy um yeah i am so thankful um for the family that i have um to tell me and teach me how important baptisms are and to have that support by my whole family to be at that baptism. Um, it's, it's everything, it means everything. So um, thank you, mom and dad, for um, doing that and teaching me those things that I needed to know to make that decision. So as a kid, we um, would take trips out to Southern California. Um, both of my parents are from Southern California, Ontario, uh, California. And um, so we would go out there to visit my mom's parents because they still live in Ontario. So um, they only live about like an hour away from Anaheim, which is where Disneyland is at. So we always knew when we were going out to see grandma and grandpa that we were um, going to Disneyland. Um, we had some fun uh, trips to Disneyland. Uh, I remember um, an experience on the Matterhorn. Um, and I remember that my dad's hat actually flew off uh, in the in the ride, and I believe that the ride actually um, they had to stop the rides to find the hat. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I remember. Um, but yeah, so that that was something that I remember it happened on one of our Disneyland trips. Um, I remember. Um, Star Wars and Space Mountain and um, just remember how fun it was and seeing all the different uh, characters of Cinderella and Pinocchio and Pirates of the Caribbean like those were the things that were pretty popular back when um, I was growing up so um, yeah Disneyland a lot of great family memories trips to Disneyland uh, definitely thankful for that so as a Bliss, um, as a Brent Bliss kid, uh, we did a lot of sports uh, growing up. That's kind of what you did if you were my dad's kid. Um, you were most likely going to play sports and that's what all of us did at one point. Um, I remember being um, little watching my older siblings play. There's, there was five kids, I was the fourth out of five. And uh, I remember watching my oldest brother, um, Bill. He played basketball, he played baseball, he played football. Um, I went to many games watching him play, um, just in city leagues. And he was great at 
all of those sports. Um, one that he excelled in was basketball. He had a really great shot as a kid, and he would go to these tournaments. I believe the name was called Hot Shots, and he um, would go on the western side of the United States to um, compete with some of the best uh, kids um, with these um, shooting tournaments, and he did really well. Um, so that was something fun that I remember um, growing up watching uh, my brother Bill play. Um, Angie, she played softball. That's my sister. She's just younger than my brother. Um, she played softball as well, um, and I remember watching her play some junior jazz basketball as well. And then my brother Brian, who's just older than me, a couple years older than me, I remember going to his baseball games uh, during the summer, going to his junior jazz games and watched him play football. And uh, that was something that um, we did. And then I was playing softball. Um, that was kind of the main sport that I did growing up was softball. And uh, we definitely won a lot of um, leagues and championships. My dad coached me. Um, so that was something that was huge um, growing up with softball and um, definitely can say sports is a big part of who we are. Um, and then my little sister, she ended up playing uh, sports as well. So yeah, summers, we were at the baseball field <laughs> and softball field and that, I mean, literally it was two different games, one to the next. Uh, I'm, that's where my life was during the summer, was on the field. Uh, the baseball field and softball field. So, um, yeah, definitely a great uh, memory of my childhood and something that I definitely still carry with me. So, um, yeah, uh, one one fun story um, I, I do want to share, kind of a cute fun story about um, me. Um, so... My dad coached a lot of my, um, a lot of my teams, and uh, Coach Pidge, uh, he was one of my coaches. Well, he was usually one of my coaches, and then one year he wasn't, and I wasn't really happy about that. And um, I remember the lady that was my coach would go out to pitch to me, and I just didn't believe in myself enough to hit her pitches. And so I kind of, um, I don't, I don't think I threw a tantrum or anything, but you know, I told him I wanted my dad to pitch to me. <laughs> and so my dad came out and he pitched to me and it really wasn't that good of a pitch, but because it was my dad, I creamed it. I killed it and I hit a home run and my dad, was really glad that I did because his pitch really wasn't that good. But, um, but because it was my dad, uh, and who I knew believed in me, I, I felt confident and I just killed it. So anyways, I, I think that's a, a fun, um, softball story, um, coach pitch story. So anyways, but yeah, thanks. Thanks dad and mom for allowing sports to be such a big upbringing. Um, so thankful for it. So thanks guys. Along with sports, um, we did have some musical side to us. Um, my mom, she is a very talented lady and, um, she plays the piano and she sings. Um, she's very talented. And uh, growing up, she would try to teach me to play the piano. And uh, I would sometimes, but then I would get frustrated and I would just stop. So um, I didn't, um, that wasn't something I continued to do on a regular basis, but um, I did like to make up songs on the piano. And my fifth grade year, I believe it was my fifth grade year, um, I actually won uh, first place award for a song that I made up. Um, and so uh, it was really neat. Uh, my parents were um, pretty proud of me and it was a pretty legit song that I made up. So uh, definitely wish I would have continued uh, 
with that talent. Uh, I didn't, I kind of just focused more on sports, but, um, but it was really cool to win an award for doing something with music. And uh, I'm still, till this day, pretty proud of that award. So yeah, thanks mom for trying to teach me piano and getting me to the point where I was able to um, do something pretty cool with that. So thanks mom. As a kid, um, we played a lot of sports and I always wanted to be able to compete with my siblings um, to excel um, at sports just like they were. And softball was a sport that I did um, as a kid growing up. But between my eighth grade year and my ninth grade year, I grew. I grew a lot and I decided that I wanted to try out for the basketball team and my dad wasn't quite on board with that at first because I didn't really show much interest in playing basketball up until um, I grew and realized that that was something that I wanted to do. So I remember the first week of tryouts. Um, I would go in and then at the end of the day my dad would have me come tell him how it went and he always assumed that I was going to get cut just because I didn't show much interest in it and um, I actually ended up making the team and my dad was shocked about that but he was very proud of me and um, my freshman year of basketball that was definitely a learning experience for me and I knew that and so I didn't start, I wasn't a starter my freshman year. Um, I was just learning how to play in a really competitive league. And I was with um, some really awesome basketball players and I had some great coaches and we won our league. Uh, we won the post tournament. Um, gosh, I know we only had three losses that year. So I, I don't know the exact wins, but um, I think it was like 18 and three or something like that. But we, yeah, we only had three losses and we dominated. So um, it, was, it was a good experience. Um, you know, by the end of the season, I was getting more playing time and I just um, really learned a lot my freshman year. So it was the beginning of my high school, uh, my high school sports career. So yeah, uh, definitely fun experience. My sophomore year, um, I already, I got my freshman year of basketball in and I was going to Mountain View High School and I had been going to summer camps um, definitely been involved with the basketball program at Mountain View High School. Um, Heather Chessman, a girl that I played basketball with my freshman year over at Lake Ridge Junior High, um, you know, asked me if I wanted to try out for the volleyball team at Mountain View. And I didn't really play a lot of volleyball, so that wasn't really something that I ever saw myself doing. But hey, you know, um, Heather Chessman, one of the best uh, basketball players uh, around, is asking me to go play, you know, volleyball. Why not? Why not give it a shot? So I tried out for the volleyball team and I made it and I played on the soft, sophomore volleyball team and we only had one loss that year, um, dominated pretty well. So it was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, volleyball, it's has a different fun to it than basketball. Um, basketball is my passion, but I love playing volleyball. I love the excitement of getting that ball up, blocking. Um, I loved blocking hitters. It was just something in me just got me so excited. Um, and then obviously when you get a spike or get that ball up in the air, it, there's just something about it that's just so much fun. So I was really happy that I was asked to join the uh, the tryouts for volleyball and being able to make the team because it was a lot of fun. 
And then uh, basketball, I started, I was playing a lot. Um, my sophomore year, I ended up um, getting the award of being the playmaker. Um, and we dominated. We didn't lose one game my sophomore year, so that was a lot of fun as well. He doesn't... Um, he does not like to win. Winning is a lot of fun. And I was definitely blessed with some great coaches um, at Mountain View High School. I, they were so knowledgeable, so smart about the game. And not only were they great coaches on the court, but they were great mentors off the court and uh, definitely felt blessed with that. Um, and so my sophomore year, I played um, volleyball and basketball um, at Mountain View. And then my junior year, um, so I actually, I got cut from the volleyball team at Mountain View High School. And um, that was a hard pill for me to swallow. And I um, wasn't very uh, happy with that. And um, there was a girl, uh, in my ward, uh, Angela Lomada, and she um, heard, she found out about it, and so the coaches over at Pro High actually asked me to go and try out for their team, and I went and tried out for their team, and I made it, and of course the basketball team, they wanted me as well, and so um, I had a decision to make if I wanted to go to Mountain View or Provo, and um, it was a really hard choice because I had the Mountain View coaches wanting me to stay, promising me a starting position. Uh, Mountain View is was a dominating high school. Um, they took... Um, first in state pretty much every year. They never lost in state. They um, would go to tournaments, be nationally ranked. Um, I mean, that that was just a legit school. So to decide if I wanted to go to Provo High or Mountain View, my junior year was a really hard decision. Um, I ended up going to Provo High my junior year. Um, I played volleyball. Uh, we won the region. We took third in state. Um, played basketball. Um, I ended up being one of the top rebounders for the team. And that was the first year they had made it to state in a really long time. And then we actually lost the first game in the playoffs by one point. And I was not very happy about that because I wasn't used to losing. So um, that was a humbling experience for me, but um, it was a good one. So good lessons to learn. And um, and so, yes, yeah, so that's where I was at my junior year. Um, and then uh, we kind of had some family things going on, some health problems in the family. And I ended up going back to Mountain View my senior year, knowing that um, I wasn't going to be able to play volleyball and I would just be playing basketball. Um, and that was kind of a hard thing to do. Um, but... Uh, my junior year, though, when I was playing at Provo High, we did play the Mountain View uh, volleyball team five times, and we beat them four of the five times. And I was definitely happy about that since I got cut from that team. So <laughs> I was, uh, you know, it's always good to beat the team where the coach didn't want you on their team. <laughs> so um, I'm actually, you know, uh, no hard feelings with that coach or anything, but... Um, but you know, that when you're competitive, that's, that's your attitude. So I was definitely happy that we beat them. But, um, but yeah, I went back to, to Mountain View due to family reasons. And um, I knew that I would probably lose some playing time for Mountain View. Um, I knew I probably lost my starting position. I left for a year and uh, um, I mean, it's understandable. I totally get that. And, um, and I, I still got playing time, but I did lose I did lose some playing time. And then uh, we took first. Uh, we didn't lose in state, so we, t we won the state championship. Um, that was the fourth year Mountain View had won the state championship. 
um, during Christmas, we went out to Santa Barbara to be nationally ranked, and that was a really fun experience for me. We played against some really great teams. We played teams over from Kentucky, New York, um, I mean, some really fast girls we played against, and uh, um, we did really well out there. It was really fun, and um, we ended up being ranked eighth in the nation. So um, it was a fun experience, and I was definitely thankful for the experience at Mountain View, uh, especially with basketball. Um, thankful for my coaches there. Um, again, like I said earlier, they are amazing coaches, and they know their stuff. Um, I like to compare them to they're the high school team of, you know, like UConn college basketball girls. Um, Mountain View just dominated, and the UConn college girls basketball team, they dominate. And so I like to compare Mountain View uh, with the UConn team. But um, that's how it was back then, um, and it was, it was pretty legit. It was pretty serious stuff. Um, I was uh, also very grateful to be part of that team my senior year because um, my sister, Angie, was diagnosed with uh, heart disease, PP, uh, PPH, yeah, PPH, sorry, that's, that's the name of it. And uh, they had given her three years to live and that, that, was, that happened at the beginning of my senior year. And so that was a really um, a hard pill to swallow as well. Um, not knowing if your sister was going to be around or not. So that kind of changed uh, some things for me in my life, but um, definitely changed hers a lot more. So, um, but yeah, so definitely uh, thankful for sports in high school and being um, on the teams that I were on and, um, you know, winning and, um, it was such a it was such a blessing in my life, and I, I learned so much from it, and I definitely have a lot of gratitude for um, what high school sports did for me. So, so I graduated from Mount View High School in 1999, and that was the year we found out that my sister um, was diagnosed with her heart disease, and so I didn't take up on the opportunity to. Um, for a scholarship I had in Texas and to go play basketball in some of the junior colleges in Utah. Um, so I kind of stayed around close to family and um, so that was the year I was kind of figuring things out. Um, let me kind of go over um, my education though. Uh, I went up to Logan for a year. I certified in phlebotomy. I was um, up there in 2001 to 2002. I certified in coaching um, and education program in 2005 with the UHSSA. I certified in dental assisting school in 2009. Um, I did photography at Utah Valley University. Um, and then in 2015, I certified in personal fitness training. Um, so that is the education that I have. Um, and uh, it's, it was pretty cool. Um, I definitely have a lot of things that I like to do. Um, I don't just like to do one thing, so as you can tell. But that is the um, history of my education. In 2003, I called up um, my coach, David Hole and asked if uh, he was looking for any coaches to um, coach at Mountain View. And he said, sure, come on down. So I ended up being one of the sophomore um, basketball coaches at Mountain View High School. I was there from 2003 to 2006. And we had great teams. I think the most losses, I think it was my third year. No, second year there, the most loss losses my team had was four in that year. Um, but uh, we dominated, definitely great group of girls that I had at Mountain View, um, hard workers, knew how to win, um, just really great girls. Uh, I still have 
great connections with these girls that I coached from back then. Um, so I, I've loved, I love coaching. I loved every second of it. Um, even when they were giving me a hard time, um, I, yeah, I mean, you just can't take those experiences back. So, uh, I was able to coach for three years uh, from 03 to 06 at Mountain View. And then in 2013, I got an opportunity to coach at Provo High. Um, my niece, uh, Skyly, she was 14, 15. She um, was going to Provo High. She was um, a, one of their starter players at Provo High, um, playing varsity. Um, she got some varsity time as a freshman. Uh, she started uh, varsity, uh, playing varsity um, her sophomore year on the varsity team and uh, but um, her freshman year I, I was coaching the basketball team there and it was a great experience it was a different experience than the coaching experiences I had over at Mountain View um, Provo High has a different program over there and um, I definitely was wanting to bring the Mountain View style basketball over at Provo High um, I had some great girls that worked really hard for me, and um, we had six wins. Uh, it was the most wins out of all of the teams um, at Purple High that year, and we had a lot of close losses. So we had a lot of games where we could have won, and, and we ended up just losing by one or two or three points. But um, what I got from that year at Provo High was these great group of girls who wanted to improve, who wanted to work hard, and they wanted to do that for us coaches, which was even more awesome. And so I remember first time we played Mountain View that year. Now, I know what Mountain View High School basketball is about. I know what kind of athletes they have there. I knew it was going to be a challenge. And we got killed the first time we played Mountain View. But the second time we played them, we only lost by three points. And we actually should have won. Um, but I think a foul was called. And anyways, it just didn't go our way. But that loss felt like a win. And me and Coach Kayla tried to explain that to the girls after the game. We're like, we know you guys don't understand this, but we are so proud of you. This feels like a win to us. Um, we were just so proud of these girls. And even though we knew it was heartbreaking for them, we knew how much and how far they have come along um, from the beginning of the year. And as coaches, to see your girls improve the way that they improved, um, there's nothing, there's not a better feeling than that. And it was a win for us coaches, uh, even though in the record book it said that it was a loss. So, um, great group of girls. Also, this was the year that my sister was diagnosed with cancer. Um, it was a year and a half, or sorry, a month and a half after my dad had passed away from um, dealing and struggling with diabetes most of his life. So about a month and a half after that, my sister was diagnosed with cancer. It was called post-transplant lymphoma. Um, so basically the medicine that um, kept my sister alive through all of her transplants. Um, she had you know, a double lung transplant when she was 21, and then she had another lung transplant um, in her later 20s. And um, she, the medicines that kept her alive gave her cancer. And so she was diagnosed with that right before the basketball season started. And um, Coach Lance Moore uh, was aware of the situation. Um, he had someone close to him who had cancer and passed away from cancer. And so he had been putting on these cancer awareness night events. And we were able to do that for my sister. And we were able to um, focus on Angie and Skyly and try to help um, her family get through this hard time in their life. And um, I can't even tell you 
how grateful I am for the girls on the basketball team and the things that they did for my sister and her family. Um, they raised money. I think they raised close to $6,000 for my sister. Um, we got the BYU basketball team to sign a basketball for them. Um, we did a lot of little um, fun service projects for uh, my sister. And I can tell you that those things that we did helped the last days of my sister's life out so much. It made her life that much easier to get through such a difficult time and it meant a lot to my sister and for that I will ever forever be grateful for what the Provo High basketball program did for my sister. Uh, my sister did end up passing away um, February 28th of um, 2013. So um, by the end of the basketball season uh, my sister had passed away. Also, at my sister's funeral, um, we had a lot of pro high uh, school students at the funeral. We had the volleyball team at the funeral. We had my girls, um, our basketball team at the funeral. Um, I don't even, I know for sure there was not an empty seat in that church. Um, we had to open it up to go back into the basketball gym. Um, we had such amazing support at that time for my sister. I can't even tell you how amazing that was, um, not only as a coach, but as a sister to see that. So um, again, uh, I will forever have a soft place in my heart for, um, for, for Pro High uh, basketball program. So thank you for that. And yeah, so anyways. Um, talking about my uh, sister is a little um, emotional for me, um, but I, like I said, I'm very grateful for um, for that time um, at Provo High and being able to be a part of that. So, thank you. I just wanted to talk about being a personal fitness trainer and um, a business that I am doing online and um, why I like doing it. Um, so I became a personal fitness trainer back in 2015. I've been doing an online business uh, with a good friend of mine named Shannon Galladay. Um, she has an LLC company called Team Pure Results and we use the Beachbody products. Um, the coolest part about being part of a business like this is how many women, mostly women that we help, but people, guys in general, um, how we're helping them change their lifestyle. Um, when you're doing fitness, a lot of people just want to go hurry, lose weight really quick and just be done. But um, what we try to do is teach people that it's a lifestyle change. So you've 80% of what you eat contributes to how much weight you're gonna lose and how healthy you're gonna be. And then the other 20% is just getting that cardio in and, um, and building muscle. And so um, eating healthy and working out on a daily basis is a lifestyle change. And so in our company, what we try to do is teach people how important that is, that it's not a diet, but that we're changing your life for the better. We're changing it so you're healthier and happier and so you can take care of your family and be there for others because if you don't take care of yourself first, you're not gonna be able to take care of um, other people. Um, I, I've watched it uh, with my dad and my sister. Um, they would still try as hard as they could to take care of their family, but it was really difficult because they, um, physically couldn't do it and so health is everything and so my goal right now in life and with my career is to teach people how important being healthy and eating healthy and being fit and getting your workouts in is so um, that is something that I hope I can teach my kids and um, my nephews, my nieces, and uh, grandkids, um, how important uh, being healthy is. So. 
So uh, September 10th of 2005, I decided it was time to take my endowments out and to be able to go and do sessions inside of the temples. And um, that day was amazing. I was 24 when I took out my endowments and for about a year and a half, I took temple um, prep classes because I knew how serious this was and I wanted to make sure that I was mature enough and ready for it. And uh, when that day came, it was one of the best days that I have experienced. Um, my mom was there with me. Um, she came, she did the my endowment ses session with me. And then uh, two of my best friends at that time, um, Diana Pine and uh, Lara Pinnock, were waiting outside for me. And then one of my good guy friends, and we were dating at the time, uh, Dean Stewart was there. So I got to go into the Salt Lake City Temple for the first time. I had my endowments taken out. I got to share this experience with my mother, which was awesome. And I can't even tell you the feelings that I have felt, the emotions I went through, um, how much love I felt, the peace I felt when I was there, um, and also remembering how nervous I was <laughs> because um, there is a lot of information you have to know when you're doing that session and I didn't want to mess it up because it was my first time and um, one of the best days ever. And then after uh, we did the session, like I said, my friends were there and we all went um, out to eat and um, it, was, it was a good day. So yeah, definitely thankful. Um, for that experience and thankful that I could experience it with my mom. So thank you, mom. In 1841, um, my great, great grandpa, Bliss, um, owned part of the land in Nauvoo. Um, he was a blacksmith. Uh, he worked on the Nauvoo temple and he served a mission in New York. In 1848, he drove Brigham Young's wagon into Salt Lake City. And he did have four different wives, but not at the same time, because back then polygamy was kind of huge, but that wasn't uh, my great-great-great-grandpa. Um, he decided to do it separately, so um, I guess he could only handle one woman at a time, but he did have four different wives. And uh, with his last wife, he did have five kids um, with her. And then I do have a relative named William Bliss. Uh, my oldest brother, William, is named after um, this guy. Um, William Bliss, he owned some of the land in Gettysburg during the Civil War, which was really neat. And um, Carnilla's New and Bliss was asked to be vice president of the United States back in the 1900s. So there's some cool things um, from the Bliss side of the family. Um, now on the feet side, this is my mom's side of the family. My great, great, great grandmother, her name was Lydia Knight. And she was converted by Joseph Smith and Newell Knight and Lydia Knight were the first couple that Joseph Smith married. Um, I am descended from John Lathrop in England. He helped bring the Bible to the people, um, but he was also thrown in prison for many years because of that. And um, he was also shipped from England to America and uh, Joseph Smith and many presidents of the USA are also a descendant from John Lathrop, so that's pretty cool. Um, I am also descended from Rufus Allen, who was a scout for Brigham Young. And my grandparents, uh, my grandparents' feet, so my mom's mom and my mom's dad, 
um, were married by Dilbert L. Staple, Stapley, um, an apostle, and they were married in the Mesa Temple on a Monday. And it was really cool because um, they don't do ceilings on Mondays. Um, temples are, they were closed back then, so um, it was kind of a really neat session that they got to do, um, so pretty cool. I wanted to um, just kind of bear my testimony um, on um, the gospel um, of the Latter-day Saints. Um, I am a member of the LDS Church, and I have been baptized into the church back in 1989, and I got my endowments taken out back in 2005 uh, in the temple, uh, the Salt Lake City Temple, and um, I can testify that um, that it is true. Um, the feelings that you get when you are being baptized, the feelings you get when you're inside that temple, there is nothing else like it. It is amazing. Um, I am so thankful that we have the temple that we can go to. Um, to not only be able to be sealed to our spouse, but to be sealed to our family, um, but to do all the things that we are allowed to do in there to help people who have passed away before us and um, to just keep building um, this truth that we have. Um, I, with my experiences as um, Growing up, um, dealing with my dad with health problems, dealing with my sister who has health problems, um, even myself um, dealing with um, HHT, um, I, I don't, I just don't know where I'd be without the gospel um, getting me through these hard trials. Um, you know, my dad has now passed away, my sister has passed away, and um, if I did not have the knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. I am not sure how I could keep going um, because I love my dad and my sister so much. And um, it is it's hard. It is hard to not have people that were such a big part of your life not in your life anymore. And, and I am just truly blessed that I have this knowledge that I get to see them again. And I am blessed that I was brought up with the gospel. And I am so thankful for it. And I just hope that um, people who do struggle with their testimony, um, that they can lean onto the Lord and pray and get those answers that they need and that they can move forward in the Church of Jesus Christ because it is true church and it is there to help you. It is there for you to get through this life and it's there to help you get on to the next life. And, um, and I just have so much faith and so much love and um, belief in the gospel and um, the power of forgiveness and the Jesus Christ, um, what he did for us and his sacrifice for us. And um, I truly can tell you that this is God's plan for us. And... Um, yeah, I just hope if there's anybody that's out there that's um, searching for um, something different in their life that they look into the gospel of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because um, I think you're going to find something pretty cool. So, um, yeah. I just wanted to talk about serving others and the importance of why we, we do that. Um, I'm a huge um, believer in serving others, uh, not only because you are helping someone that's in need, 
but it actually helps you more than that person probably. It makes you a stronger and a better person. Um, I know for me, uh, just watching things that my um, dad went through with his health and watching things that my sister went through with her health and watching their trials and their struggles, um, just the little things that people would do for them meant so much to them. And we were always taught to serve others anyways, even if we were going through a hard time. And I have found that that has made me a happier person uh, by serving others. Um, you know, uh, after my sister passed away from cancer, we did the cancer awareness thing for her at Provo High School. And, um, you know, I stopped coaching and kind of took some time off from that. And um, I do uh, play adult uh, co-ed softball. Um, it's a huge thing. I love sports. And um, one year, I think it was 2014, I found out one of my good friends uh, from high school, uh, Steve Strong, his little girl, um, only age of like three, was diagnosed with cancer. And, you know, they, they do okay with money and everything, but um, I know what it's like to watch someone you love struggle with cancer. And I can't even imagine being your own kid that you have to watch struggling with this disease and the things that that little girl had to go through. And so I decided to um, change our team name and we were called Team Sierra and tried to raise some money for them. And then we had the little girl come to one of our games and we had her hit, um, take the first pitch of the game. So the clock was actually running. So it was part of the game and she um, hit the ball and she ran the bases with her daddy. And um, it was the time of her life. And at this point, and they didn't know this point in time if she was gonna beat the cancer or not. Um, but to just watch how grateful Steve and his wife was for that experience and watching how happy that little girl was. It just meant everything to me. And the good thing is, is she actually did beat the cancer. And to my knowledge, she's still doing really great. Um, but, you know, I had lost somebody from cancer and watching, you know, people have to go through that. Um, I just wanted to do something to just better their life. And by doing that, it makes losing my sister a little bit easier um, because I can help other people um, when they're going through their trials. And um, I know that's something that my sister would want me to do as well. So um, I try to do things like that. Um, I've done other service projects. Um, uh, a good friend of mine um, Jeff, uh, he lost his wife and um, he was left with his kids and um, I can't imagine how hard that would be. And I know he does okay with money as well, but I wanted to do something nice for him and his kids and because um, uh, it's a hard thing to go through. And so my singles ward and I, we um, did kind of like a sub Santa thing for them. Uh, we got some gifts and stuff and um, tried to make their first Christmas without their mom and wife um, maybe a little better, as much as it can be. And so that that was a neat experience that I was able to do as well. Um, yeah, there's a couple of other ones that I've done. Um, but that those are uh, the two main ones I can think of right now. So. Um, I know, I know it meant a lot to them um, because they told me, they thanked me, um, they were appreciative of it. Um, but by doing stuff like that, it has made me a better person. Um, it makes me realize that, you know, the trials I go through um, are really not that hard, um, even if they are, because there's someone else that's going through something just as hard or harder. And when you service others, um, it just, it humbles you, it makes you a better person. And so I 
I truly recommend that um, if you are going through something hard, like a hard time, um, that you find a project, find a family, find somebody that you can do service for, um, or just small things throughout a day, and I promise it will make your life so much better. So, thank you.